Okay, guys, welcome to Sportsmanners TV and uh, a Wrestle Slam special. I'm joined by the lovely Georgia Smith, um, the daughter of uh, Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldog. Uh, you, you know, Georgia, you're always busy, you're always active. You know, I, I'm a big fan of uh, your Instagram work and your own personal stuff. Um, tell us how is life for you at this moment? Because obviously, you know, we spoke about COVID 19 and stuff. It, it's crazy times, isn't it? Yeah, I've just been trying to just keep positive and I'm not really a super optimist, but I'm just trying to keep sane in these super times and just trying to, you know, like with my dad's page and um, running his legacy and uh, keeping that going. And I'm just trying to do something positive with my time instead of, you know, sitting and dwelling. And <laughs> I just thought when this whole thing happened, I was like, what could I do that could, you know, make myself and, you know, other people around me feel better and I've really just gone a hundred percent with my dad's stuff and his Instagram has taken off and I just thank everybody for their love and support every day for it and it's just grown massively so that's what I've been doing during COVID. <laughs> well I tell you the, the hard work is paying off obviously your, your father's legacy has never been forgotten but the fact you you know you've set up the Instagram page uh, the website's fantastic it's, yeah. it's obviously it's it's given the fans a lot more content you know from your dad, like tell us yeah. how overwhelmed are you with the, the feedback? Because we see all the fan mail, you know, we, the fans are always in contact. Instagram is fantastic. We've seen all the old footage of your dad and especially your dad in The Rock. There was some great footage there when he came back yeah. to SmackDown. But, you know, how overwhelmed are you with all the, the feedback? Uh, well, it's funny that you mentioned The Rock's thing because it was like SmackDown's, uh, what was it, 21st anniversary recently, and that was a part of it, and uh, WWE Fox posted it, uh, ESPN posted it, The Rock posted it, and I was like, wow, this is crazy, um, but yeah, the feedback, people are just like, I get messages like, thank you, thank you, uh, and that's, I do it for my dad's fans and for myself, and you know, because he's not here, and I want to, you know, keep, keep Davey his legacy and his spirit here is for as long as I, I possibly can. Of course, I get like, you know, negativity and haters, but you know, if they don't want to follow it, that's fine. <laughs> but as they say, if you have haters, it means you're doing your job, right? Exactly. And that's exactly it. You, you hit the nail on the head. So, and I'm, I've been getting more and more of that. So I must be doing something right. You are indeed. Now, tell us a bit about yourself. Obviously, you know, you obviously you spent a bit of time in the UK, obviously mm -hmm. a bit of time in America and obviously Canada, but um, your earliest wrestling memories, obviously you've got so many, but can you tell us your early, you know, wrestling memories? Obviously, it must have been really cool, you know, mm -hmm. you know, with your dad and being around some iconic stars like your dad, but what kind of memories do you have from the start? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> let, me, let me think here. So when I was little, I always just saw my dad on TV. So he was just known to me as Davey. So if you see on my Instagram posts or on whenever I refer to him, he's Davey. He's not dad. I never called my dad dad because he was always on TV. It was Davey Boy Smith, Davey Boy Smith. And at home, my mom would, would call him Davey, whereas my dad would call her mommy. So that's, <laughs> I was just knew him as Davey. And my earliest memories was probably watching him probably 91, I would say. I don't really remember the British Bulldogs much. Harry would more so. I don't really remember Matilda. I remember Winston. And I remember there was WrestleMania. Is, it was in Anaheim, I think, WrestleMania 7, when Donald Trump was there. <laughs> we were just talking about. But uh, he was there. And I remember when we were going inside the arena, uh, I was, like, so excited to see Winston. And I had him on the leash. And Winston wouldn't go with me. Yeah. But when my dad came, my dad was like, oh, he took the leash. And Winston went right to him. He knew where his loyalty lied, where his bread was buttered, <laughs> that little dog. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was probably my earliest memory was that. Uh, WrestleMania 7, uh, when I was about four years old. Yeah. And then I remember Wembley Stadium. That and was I was uh, going on five years old then. Um, and I remember taking the train. And I remember being there at the live event. And it was just the craziest wrestling event I've ever been to, ever. Uh, with the exception of um, Canadian Stampede with the crowd there. But yeah, those two would be my earliest. And I just remember I knew with my dad, like, because I, I was used to watch cartoons when I was younger. And like, I'd watch like the Flintstones and the Jetsons. And you'd see like the, the dad with the newspaper in the morning and the briefcase. And he'd be heading off to his, you know, nine to five job or whatever, or whatever business job. And I'd see my dad and I'd be like, he doesn't look like normal dads on TV. 
<laughs> this is something I think he's he's different and uh, I brought him to school and kids were like oh my god that's your dad and I was like ah yeah okay he's he's a star <laughs> definitely is and like we speak of your family obviously the Hare family or um you know definitely probably the most famous Canadian family of all time but obviously having you know uncles like Brett and Owen um, yeah. and obviously Jim what, what was it like I'd say like you know even even going off to Stu's house I'd say that it must be been all wrestle talk I'd say like you know like having a big family dinner and stuff was incredible but I, I can only imagine the talk and I suppose Brett and Owen playing you know in character because they had a yes. nice way they, yeah they even played in character like at family dinners and I remember I was like oh Owen and Brett they're like not talking to each other yeah I, I remember that but it was it was pretty pretty awesome having them as uncles and I didn't realize it so much like when I was younger because they were just like you know they were my uncles yeah. and then once you know you see them on tv and you go to events with them and it's like oh my god <laughs> but yeah my family I we're different, but you know, we're, we're, we try to be nice people for the most part. <laughs> different, difference good. It's, it's, it, there's no point being uh, normal. It's good to be different, I think, you know, it's, it's definitely something. And like, tell us about obviously your, um, you know, your granddad Stu, like what, what was it, you know, could, could you tell us like, what was it like being in a house? We always see the pictures of, yeah. of the house and stuff. Obviously it was huge insight. Obviously it was a big house and there was obviously great memories there. Yeah. My grandfather had like, it was probably the most beautiful house I've ever seen and everything he did. And I think that's where I get like, in my Aunt Ellie, we get like our interior design <laughs> niche from because my grandfather just had like impeccable taste, like mohair chairs and chandeliers everywhere. And like, he got this when he was doing good in wrestling. So when wrestling wasn't doing good and you had 12 kids, you know, my, they were struggling. But when it was really, really good, yeah, he had chandeliers, um, beautiful curtains, uh, beautiful Persian rugs and you know then you had the basement which was the dungeon <laughs> and then outside was a wrestling ring you know uh, that was just kind of my life like yeah. and, and lots of animals and just everywhere you went there was something going on um, you know you'd have S Smith in the attic um, you know you'd have Bruce and Ross in the basement you'd have people coming in and out all the time there was just cars everywhere outside my grandfather's house so they my grandfather had like a bunch of Cadillacs like he just <laughs> didn't want to let go or Smith didn't want to let go <laughs> but um, I don't know if you've ever seen like the Brett drew like a cartoon picture and it was like a uh, of the heart house but it was pretty accurate um, yeah and it's just I had so many I've got like 41 first cousins that's that's surreal that is unreal I'm yeah. jealous. I'm jealous. Christmas must be extra special. Yeah, well, it was. It was especially with the hard house. Now we're all like, kind of set, yeah, all over the place, scattered. But um, yeah, it was. It was. I really wish I could go back to like those days, like when we were all all together and pretty much before um, Survivor Series happened. You yeah. know, I wish we could just go back to that. But you know, I've got lots of treasured memories and. Um, yeah good good times good times we have to speak obviously about yourself i know you spent a bit of time in the uk and you 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 know you done a bit of tv work and you're still in the media spotlight you obviously you enjoy that kind of stuff obviously you you worked hard to get to that position and, and you studied yeah hard. what yeah. was it like to, to go back to the uk in, in recent years and, and do a bit of work there it was uh i really enjoyed it i mean like i was super nervous doing it i was like oh my god and i was very like you know, because they have 10, you get 10 pounds more on TV or what, what's, what's that? You're <laughs> at TV at 10 pounds. <laughs> and when I look back, I'm like, oh my God. But, you know, it was something, it was something good for me to do and to get out of my comfort zone and to get, you know, in front of the camera. And um, I really enjoyed it. I wish I did it more, but, yeah. you know, it was, it was what it was, as that old saying was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, uh, it, I, I really loved going back to England and like seeing how my dad kind of lived. Cause you know, I was always visiting when my dad was alive, we would always just visit for summers or visit for, you know, little bits at a time, but I had to actually live there. And the, you know what I mean? It was just, it was really cool. Um, you know, I, I, a lot of times I sometimes didn't feel like I fit in 
because like with the humor and everything <laughs> and everybody just assumed like I was just a, a yank an American or whatever yeah. but um I made a lot of good friends there and um I, I traveled all over there and I did tv work and I did other um various work and it was a chapter in my life that um I'm glad I did because I, I kind of broke not not broke away from my family but I was like I just want to do something for me and I want to do something different and you know I it was something that I can tell my kids and you know I've got my U U UK passport so I can travel and live there whenever I want thanks to old pops. Is it fair to say you're a bit of a homebird so like I, I, I moved to Vancouver back in 2011 oh, wow. and I loved it but Obviously, there was something back home I was missing. It was obviously the food. Yeah. The food was beautiful. Yeah. I, I loved it. But are you a bit of a home bird? Do you find it hard to kind of maybe, you know, stay out of Canada, America, and obviously be in Europe? Yeah, when I was there, um, I was just too far, too far away for too long. And that's that's kind of when, and then, you know, my, my Uncle Jim had died. And I was like, I just got to go home. Like, I got to. Yeah. It was really sad for me to do that. I was really like, everybody was like, what, you're going home? And no, you can't go home. And everybody thought, a lot of people thought when I came back to the States, I was going to go right back to England. <laughs> yeah. People were like, you're going to be back. You're going to be back. And I was yeah. like, but uh, yeah, I totally was. I, I am a home bird. I mean, and I, now like, uh, there's lots of things that I miss about England. I miss the food. I miss, and lots of people would be like, oh, the food's crap. But I love the food. I love, you know, that's, that's the fish, Davy. Fish and me. chips. And, and, yeah, fish we, and chips. We call it the chippy. The chippy. Which is good. Yeah, it's amazing. And I miss Tesco's. And, <laughs> yeah, Tesco's <laughs> I had, and I drove on the other side of the road. Yeah. I actually drove. I had a car and drove. And awesome. my mom was like, well, you really need to learn how to drive a stick shift. I was like, okay, let's not go that far here. <laughs> One step at a time. Um, but yeah, uh, and I got to see my granddad a little bit more. And yeah. It was good. That was good. Speaking of your, your dad's legacy in the UK, obviously there's still family in the UK. Um, he's, his legacy in the UK is obviously he's probably, you know, the greatest British wrestler of all time. There's yeah. no doubt about it. But, you know, obviously there's a lot of family in England. Uh, would you stay in touch with them, obviously? Cousins mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff? Yep. Yeah, I, I speak to all of them. I was so disappointed with like this when the whole WrestleMania thing because they were all flying down for it. And like everything was booked and planned and they got their outfits. And I just felt the worst for my granddad. Cause it's like, I just feel like he just can't catch a break. You know, it's like his wife died, his daughter died, his da son died. And I feel like he's just so like over everything. And it's just, he just constantly gets like bad news and health problems. And he got this and, you know, I made sure WWE, like you're going to give my granddad a first class ticket you know, he's going to be staying in the talent hotel. Like you make sure he gets best treatment. Yeah. And it was like, and he kept saying to me when I, like before this COVID thing, he was like, I doubt, I doubt it's going to happen. Like, it's just, cause it's just the, you know, it's just, it's always bad things that happen. And I was like, no granddad, you were going to have a good time. And like, you're going to come. And he was like, he just kind of didn't believe it was happening. And then when we got the announcement, we had to be quiet about it for over a month. Yeah. So he couldn't even like tell everybody. And I think he thought like, eh, like it's just, it's just, in the, and he doesn't really watch wrestling. He doesn't, you know, doesn't keep up with the media and that aspect. But I was like, no, it's going to happen. And they're like, he's like, I, I, I think it's going to get canceled. And then it was like, it did. And I was like, oh God. Yeah. But I, I just really hold hope that it will happen. And like, he will experience that. Cause my granddad deserves that. He's been through enough. Yeah, well, you know, hope God it will happen. Hopefully next year, like, you know, there's a lot of talk that things, you know, obviously we can't predict it, but they're saying hopefully yeah. things will be okay for next year's WrestleMania. So, you know, fingers crossed that does happen. And yeah. he worked hard. Speaking of, of your dad's induction into the Hall of Fame, finally, which is well-deserved, you know, the fans were on Vince's arse. Everyone wanted it to happen, and it was going to happen. It was just a matter of time. But how proud of you, you know, of your dad are you that it actually happened and it's finally, you know coming about i i couldn't believe it um did i did you ever hear about how i found out about it no no i haven't okay so um okay so do you remember when my grandfather Stu got inducted into the hall of fame and like it was announced like new year's day i think back like in 2010 okay so that was announced so that was you know pretty early 
obviously very early in the, in the new year of that time. And then, you know, in November, December, it was like NWO, Batista got named. And, uh, and then there was like, I can't remember who else. Was there anybody else between that time and the new year? JBL, maybe? Yeah, I think it was JBL. Yeah. yeah. And we were getting into like February, uh, like towards Valentine's Day. And I was like, I don't think this is going to happen. Like, I don't think we're going to hear anything about it. And keep in mind, when I was at WrestleMania last year, when I saw Mark Carano, he was like, oh, are you campaigning or doing anything for your dad in the Hall of Fame? And I was like, yes. And I was like, so many fans have signed a petition. And I was like, Tampa would be perfect for my dad. And he was like, you never know. Yeah, you never know what might happen. He's like, I can't guarantee anything, but you never know. And I was like, and you do know Davey lived in Tampa. And he was like, yeah, we know. I was like, okay. So I, I kind of kept that in mind. And I was like, you know, may, maybe maybe it will happen. And as I was saying, we're getting into February. And I was like, I don't think this is going to happen. And I was just feeling kind of disappointed. And I remember telling a friend of mine, I was like, yeah, I think, you know, it's just not going to happen. And I was like, I just don't really want to be here it, when this all takes place because it's going to be all exciting and everything. And I'll feel like we're all missing out, you know? Yeah. And that, you know, Davey didn't get his recognition. And and my friend was like, you know, you, you never, like, don't don't just give up yet. And then it was literally, like, the next day I was going, I was at uh, an office paying my taxes. And I got a, a text from Harry. And he was like, what kind of champagne do you want to get? Because I've signed with AEW. And I was like, what? And I thought, okay, I this is kind of a random I was like, uh, whatever. And I kind of was like texting my cousin. I'm like, oh my God, I think Harry signed with AEW. And he's like, you got to keep it quiet though. And I was like, shh, don't tell anybody. So I come home and he sits me down. He was like, right, well, get get our mom on the phone. And I put her on speakerphone. I'm like, okay. And then he's like, so I've signed with AEW. And she's like, oh, well, that's good. And we're keep in mind, Harry was signed with a different company at this time. So we're like, okay. And he's keeping going with this. And he's like, just kidding. I'm not going to AEW. Davey's going on the Hall of Fame. Awesome. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what? So you're not going to AEW? He was like, no. I just said that so, like, you would for sure come home, <laughs> come here, <laughs> and we would sit down. And I would get hurt, and, like, we would all be together. He's like, because I knew if it wasn't, if you didn't think it was something really important, you wouldn't come. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I was like, false finish. I was like, so Davey's going in the Hall of Fame. He was like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, and I'm going on the bump. Uh, so this was on a Monday, I think, he's, or Tuesday. And he said, I'm going on the bump to Connecticut, you know, that show, The Bump. And he's like, I'm going to be announcing it live on there. And he said, so you can't say anything. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, you're joking me. And he's like, no, I'm not. He said, I got, I, they told me a couple weeks ago, but I've had to be quiet about it until – this announcement and I was like oh my god and then you know we popped the champagne and I had a little, little Instagram toast and people kind of it was kind of a cryptic people had no idea what I was talking about yeah. and uh I just I was couldn't believe it and then I got the call from WWE the next day and they were like all right let's make travel plans and they gave me a whole list of like media things Harry and I were going to be doing and I was going to go to fan access with my dad's gear and display it yeah. and uh it was I was, we were doing back to back to back things and that's when I discussed my travel arrangements with my granddad and and then on the bump they didn't announce it they didn't and I was like uh Harry brother where are you you're I mean you're on here but you're talking about Valentine's Day with Maddie and TJ where is this announcement and he's like oh last minute they changed it but I'm I'm, t I'm doing it on Corey Graves after the bell so when he, that plays and I was like so how long do we have to wait for that? He's like, oh, it's going to be like March like 15th or 12th or something. And I was like, so I have to be quiet about it from now until then. Yeah. And I was like, you're killing me. Oh, my God. And then just everybody on, in, on social media was like, is your dad going in? Is your dad going in? Is your dad going in? What's going on? What's going on? I'm like, I, I, I can't. And Harry's like, you can't say anything. And I was like, no, like, I don't want to ruin this. I, I don't want to – like this – We've been waiting for this for so long. So mum's the word. And so many people like close to me like, were asking me. And I'm like, I don't know. I did tell my granddad, obviously, and my, my family. But a lot of other people, it was like I couldn't tell. And it oh, yeah. killed me. And then 
the day, Jerry, the day it was announced was the day COVID, like everything shut down. I know, I remember it. Jesus. I was like, oh, because I was going out there. I wanted to make, like, one of the things I was looking forward to most, obviously meeting yourself, but being at the Hall of Fame, because I've been at the last three WrestleManias doing media work. And obviously flying over from Ireland, it's great because you have that long flight and you have a lot of time to think on the plane. But yeah, it's, 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 you know, I think like when I, when I think of, you know, COVID, you know, affecting WrestleMania Hall of Fame and stuff, the one thing that, you know, affected me was Davey Boy Smith, the British Bulldog, because, you know, we were waiting so long for that to happen. But, Georgia, it's fair to say it will happen. It's just, it's just, it's just a matter of time. It's just it a matter will of time. Be, yeah. You know? I was so excited. Like I was, I was in Las Vegas when I did all the announcing, and I had to do a bunch of interviews for it. And then uh, it was literally like I, I saw on social media it was like SmackDown has been moved to the Performance Center. Yeah. And then when we were going to do things in Las Vegas, it was like shut, shut, shut. And I remember my mom's like, "You got to get out of there. Like you got to go home because you might be like this is a vague thing happening." And I thought maybe it was going to last because on, on as well, they were still going to proceed with WrestleMania at yeah. this point. It was still going on. Like I saw government of Florida was like, yes, it was still, it will still happen. And I was like, okay. And I remember a friend of mine was like, yeah, like Vince is not going to let WrestleMania not happen. So it's going to happen, but yeah, it didn't well, happen not- quite the same, obviously. Yeah. So uh, I was just kind of like, it was just another kind of like blow. I was like, Ugh! But, you know, when it happens, it's going to make it that much better. Because, like, we all have been just waiting for it. And, like, it's, and it will be like, Dave, you'll be a 2020, 2021 inductee. <laughs> 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 kind of technically. So, um, you know, things happen the way they're meant to, I guess. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't the greatest. But, you know, um, everybody has to keep safe and we have to just keep doing what we're doing. But... It, like you said, it will happen. It will. We, we spoke to Drew McIntyre after WrestleMania, and one of the questions we put to him was, look, Drew, obviously you worked your whole life to, to become oh, wow. a WWE champion. And we were like, look, Drew, what, what was it like, you know, having to obviously pre-record the match? And, and, you know, and he just said, look, it is what it is. He's like, you know, I can't do nothing about it. But, like, he was, he was saying, you know, you could be sure in the future I'll get to do it in front of a crowd. So it's going to be the same for Davey. Obviously, you're going yeah. to have all of fame, hopefully next year. Yeah. And your granddad will be there. All the family will be there. And you could just have an extra few drinks to celebrate after, you know, what's happened. And it'll all work out. Don't worry, Georgia. We promise the, you that. The two oh. British guys, they got the... I know. It's true. <laughs> you think of it that way. You think yeah. of that way. Um, we, we have a couple of fan questions. Obviously, there's a lot of fans that get in touch with us all the time. Um, Aaron wants to know, have you ever considered or have you ever wrestled? Because obviously it's in the family, it's in the genetics. Your dad was an ass, an absolute specimen. Like his muscles, his biceps, his physique from an early age was incredible. Like you know what mm-hmm. I mean. The cousin Dynamite Kid, you know, Brett Owen. Have you ever considered wrestling? Mm-mm. No, I just it just never that bug like never bit me. And when I was you know in my early teens and stuff. <clears throat> women weren't really like it was it was it was a male dominated sport yeah and i was getting into like the puppies and bras and panties and <laughs> all that and i remember just like my dad kind of said to me like this is not something you're gonna get into mm. like this is not and i he he did a an interview my dad did my dad was like she can do anything but be a lady wrestler i've seen it yeah yeah you know what i'm talking about he was yeah. like no and uh i totally and did you see that promo when he was like, I, I would never let my daughter into a locker room full of wrestlers. Like yeah. my dad would be like, and I have been in a locker room for MLW and stuff. Cause that's name of the game, but he was no bueno on that one. And he just, just cause like he saw how hard it was for him. And he was like, I don't want my daughter to go through that. Like I was his princess i was i was a dad's girl and it was like no you you're not doing that and you don't so, mess with debbie you don't mess with him because he debbie looks no. like he, no that's no oh. nope yeah. and i was like okay and also he my dad really pushed me he he was the one that pushed me he was like you know you should be doing modeling or you should be and i remember i love the spice girls and i was like 10 years old and he was like you know you georgia could be a singer she could be a model she could be an actress not a lady wrestler and it was, but you know, 
had I seen Natty or, you know, Becky Lynch or Charlotte Flair um, back, you know, when I was that age, yeah, maybe it would have been different. But that wasn't the case. And uh, my dad just said no. <laughs> And I was like, okay, but I just, it, it never, I'd never had interest in it. Like I would see the wrestling practices at my grandfather's house with my uncles. And I was just like, Ooh, this is, I, I credit anybody who does it because mentally and physically, it is not easy. You're always on your feet. You're always, and you're always having to train and do things and do the proper protocol for warming up. Like it is go, go, go. Yeah. And I, I'm not like athletic or <clears throat> anything like that and I have like really bad memory and like constant ADD so like I couldn't put a match together and I'm like super nervous like talking in front of people like when the hall of fame happens I'm gonna be like <gasps> like a deer in the headlights so like I I mean obviously once you do it and you do it and you do it you get used to it and you know you kind of own the, the the stage so to speak but I it's just, no, I'll leave that, I'll leave that to Harry, but, you know, I'd love to be in it, in another aspect, you yeah. know, um, whether it was, like, a backstage announcer, or, you know, if Harry, if they were, like, oh, we want you to be, like, his valet, or his manager, or something, I would do that. That's a good idea. I would love to do that. That's a good idea, and speaking of backstage, Jonathan wanted to know, could you see yourself ever working with WWE? Because we, we reckon you would be awesome backstage, you know, give you a show, you know, have you do something on camera, that's where you, you know, perhaps belong, but do you reckon maybe something could happen down the lines? You're still extremely young, by the way, so it's, you can wrestle. Oh, I appreciate well. that, because I get told all the time I'm old, so yeah. <laughs> thanks for yeah. that. Yeah. Um, it's funny that you say that, because my mom was like, you would be great if you had your own show on the network, and like, you had a bulldog with you, and like, you guys answer questions and <laughs> I was like, that's actually a good idea. But, um, I would love to, I, I did apply for WWE last year and I didn't get it, but, um, you know, you never know. Um, you never know. I'd love, I'd love to work there. I, I would, that would be like a dream come true, but, uh, maybe we should campaign that because I think that's maybe. something you deserve. Oh, well, that's thanks. something you deserve. Um, and last of all, obviously, you're, you're, obviously you're a big fan of your brother. Your brother, uh, he's a legend. Obviously, he's making quite a name for himself, as always, in the wrestling industry. Uh, how proud are you of your bro? And Jason wants to know, do you reckon we'll ever see him back in the WWE? There's a lot of rumors floating about that he might go back and do something. <clears throat> well, right now, he actually left this morning. He's doing um, uh, Josh Barnett's Blood Sport. Where like yep. John Moxley and some other people are are wrestling on that, and Killer Cross wrestled with him last year, WrestleMania weekend. Yep. So he's doing that right now. Um, I know he would really love to go back to Japan. I had a dream last night he actually went back to Japan, <laughs> strangely. But uh, he he would love to go there, but I don't think it's possible right now. I mean, maybe he could, but it's just so touchy. Yeah. Everything is right now. Yeah. So. Um, but I would, I personally would love to see him back in the WWE. Um, yeah. and, but I, I can't like speak for Harry. Um, but you know, Who knows? So what Mark Carano said to me, you never know. You never know. And last of all, have you ever been to Ireland? So obviously, yeah. yeah, you have. So have you been Dublin, Cork? Can you remember? I just went to Belfast. Belfast, cool spot. I went, went to Belfast. Uh, Harry did a show there back in 2017. And I flew over from England over there, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I really did. I wish I was only there for like a day. Yeah. But um, I really, in my time in England, I really wanted to go to like Dublin and all that. It didn't happen, but yeah. I would love to. Well, hopefully, hopefully, we will see you here next year. You can bring all Davies, you know, member Billy yeah. Owens, and we can make it happen. There's a big uh, company in Ireland called OTT, Over the Top Wrestling. And they bring the, the biggest wrestlers to Dublin. So hopefully we, we'll see you here next year. We're going to have to bring you down to Cork and, and show you the Cork way. Please. We I have love the Blarney it. Stone. You probably head to the Blarney Castle. Yeah. Home yeah. Spot. So we, we'll have Take to Take me there and let's get a Guinness. We will. We'll definitely do it. But uh, Georgia, we know you're very busy. So thank you for taking the time to speak to us there. It really means a lot. Um, oh, I'm, I'm so glad I got to do this. And I hope like I didn't <laughs> bore you or anybody too much. I just... I, I I've just been 
go, go, going. And I uh, had a really late night of working and I got up and, you know, had just had my first cup of coffee. So I'm just shaking off the cobwebs. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't do interviews often, but, well, you know, we, are, I, we know that we know that Trust you me. know that because I, I decline. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't mean to be, I just, when you say tell the same things over and over and, but you know, I found your email uh, very genuine and I think you're a, a genuine person and a fan and uh, yeah. sincere. So. Well, I appreciate it very much. We'll send you all the links and uh, stay safe. We'll catch you. Hopefully we'll catch you next year, but I will see you at WrestleMania at some stage. It should be next year and we'll have, a, we'll have a good chat. Okay. Thank you very awesome. much. Thank you.